Aloha, everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas holiday season. Now, as we move up to the New Year's holiday session, I believe Thursday is New Year's Day. I'm not quite sure, but let's just pretend like it's Thursday. We're going to have a full week of trading, I do believe, on the day before and day after New Year's, which is kind of odd, but, so, but volume should continue to be well below average, so let's not pay attention to volume. The main thing is, though, is that the market continues to creep higher. The NASDAQ went nowhere today. If we look at the oscillator, TSV is still around the mid-range. The MACD is starting to curve up here, which is a bullish indication. So even though that we're what I like to call tightrope walking, which normally leads to lower prices at some point, you know, we're tightrope walking here, down we go. Um, tightrope walked up here, down we went for a little bit. Tightrope walked up here, down we went. Tightrope walked here, went up a little bit, but then rolled over. Same thing, same thing. So I assume that we'll continue this pattern if this is what we want to do for the rest of this week, rally on below average volume by like 0.01% per day. So as you can see on the NASDAQ, oscillators, everything looks good. Moving over to the S&P 500, same thing, tight roping higher. MACD looks great. TSV is overall trending up on the short term, so everything looks great there so far. Dow Jones Industrial Average, same thing. MACD is hooking higher above the moving average. TSV is trending higher. Russell 2000, I'm going to get rid of volume here for this one. TSV, very, very strong trending higher short term higher highs, higher lows, and MACD crossed above the moving average a while ago, and now it steadily moves higher. Now moving over to the stochastics, you can see that it's trying to race back up to the overbought territory, but we're not at overbought yet, so we can still move higher before we really have any overbought resistance to worry about. The S&P 500 moving towards overbought condition again, but moving steadily higher. That's always bullish for while that is moving up. New York Stock Exchange, same thing. NASDAQ, same thing. Very, very strong on the stochastic. So while everything looks good, same with our holdings. We have no sells on an end-of-day basis. However, I got shaken out of SUPN today as it did a little flash sell-off, like a one-minute sell-off or however many, five minutes, I don't know. But at one point in today, it dumped hard below 826. My trigger was 825. So you can see with it hitting 822, my trigger hit. Good news is, is that it only finished 10 cents higher. So overall, I don't feel like, hey, I got screwed. If this thing would have closed back at 868, I'd be like, damn it. But if it did that, I'd be putting the trade back on. So right now, the trade is off. Now, what will put me get me to put that trade back on? Easy. We close above 872 or 868. I'm not sure. Depends on the color of BOP, if it's yellow or green. Depends on volume, if it's big or little. Little volume, no BOP. It's going to be 872 needed to re-put on the position. 868 if there is green bop and or massive volume. But either way, SUPN will go back on if it reverses, but that's the only intraday sell stop. Nothing on an intraday basis. One new long position, LOCK. Been watching this one for a while, so it's not like this one snuck up on me. We made mention of lock back here. I don't think that I liked it here, so we passed on in. It was a good thing because it pulled back. But now it looks like it's ready to go again, this time breaking to new um, short-term highs. Actually, I believe that's 2000 and, nope, not 2014 highs, but six-month highs at least on very, very, very strong volume, huge volume surge, and a very big bop surge to green bop from yellow bop. Everything's beautiful. The only thing is it's a little risky. If you look at here, the high is 1790, so you'd want to get this around the 18 level. With it being at 1823, it's 23 cents higher. It's a, you know, a little bit of a riskier long on an end-of-day basis, so... I'm going to go ahead and still do 2.5%, but I am going to have one stop on the book below that 1765 level. Normally, it would be 1711, then with an emergency stop, maybe down here at 1618. As it is, it'll be 1765. I'll put that first stop. Actually, I might split it up into thirds. So what I think I'm going to do now is in thirds it. 1765 first stop, 1711 next stop and then 16, 18 next stop. So I'll third it. Normally I do halves, 50-50, but I'll do 33% on lock. And the nice thing about taking a 1% position in FMD to see if this one wants to be a Momo monster. Um, I see what's going on. It's moving higher because of an IRS settlement news. 
haven't really researched into it, but I understand why they're moving, and I've seen some of the chatter about it, and it's a little bit of a momentum stock. So what I think I would like to do is do 1% in it, but I want to do a limit order as I see that it's up to 590 after hours. You can forget about that shit. I either want this thing at 569 or I don't want it at all. And if it pulls, if it, it opens at 590 in the morning, I more than likely am going to go ahead and cancel the order. I believe that this is just a little after hours you know, aggressive trade, and it should open around 570. So if it opens at 590, the trade just won't even happen. But if it can open around 570, if the limit order gets filled, great. Like I said, 1% position. I might use um, intraday levels of today as, you know, various sell stops. So instead of waiting for 496 for the first sell stop to hit, it might be around 525, 530, then 496 with then a final ultimate one below 482. So that's the plan with FMD 1%. But lock is the really, really the only real trade for the night. 2.5% position. 18 uh, limit order would be best. I'm still going to do market orders. So 18.23 will probably be where I get filled at. Uh, great pick, but make sure you have tighter sell stops than you would if this was like a fresh breakout all in one bar. Like if this was all one bar, 17.11 would be the first sell stop.